Okay, this question says the following. A solid shaft for cement kiln produced from the tool steel shown in the SM figure below, it's this one down here, it must be 96 inches long and it must survive continuous operation for one year with an applied load of 12,500 pounds. The shaft makes one revolution per minute during operation. Design a shaft that will satisfy these conditions. In a rotating shaft, it looks something like this. You have some fixed wall on the left-hand side over here. Then you have your shaft itself, and this has an applied load. And because this is rotating, this force alternates between tension and compression, right? So this is the perfect case for an SN curve, where your materials often rotate between those two values. So the first thing to do, since we're told that it needs to rotate one revolution per minute and last a year, let's figure out how many cycles we're actually talking about. So N, the number of cycles, this is going to be one cycle per minute. We know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. There are 24 hours in a day. And that there are 365 days in one year. Multiplying this out, everything cancels except for cycles per year. And since it's one year, that gives us the number of cycles. When I punch this into my calculator, I get a value of 525,600. Or we can write this in scientific notation as 5.256 e to the 5 cycles will have passed in one year. So now that we have the number of cycles, we can go ahead and use our SN figure to figure out what the stress should correspond to to meet this number of cycles for tool steel. Pay attention on this figure down here. You've got both an aluminum alloy line and a tool steel line. We're going to use the tool steel line. So the x-axis shows us the number of cycles. Right here is 10 to the fifth. That would be 100,000 cycles. But we're at 5.25 e to the fifth. So we go from 1, this is then 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we'd actually go a little bit further. That's going to be hard to read on a graph like this. Let's just leave it that line. We're going to draw a line up and see where it intersects. Might be somewhere around there. On the y-axis, we see our applied stress. That's plotted in KSI, so PSI times 1,000. So it looks like it's just above 70, maybe like 72,000. 72 KSI would be 72,000 PSI. So 72,000 PSI, pounds per square inch. That's going to be our stress. Now we're told in the, in the problem, we're given the length of this uh, rod and we're told what the force is. And then it, remember, it wants us to design a shaft. So what we need to design is really the diameter. Fortunately, we can figure out what the stress is for one of these rods that are under um, this rotational force. So we're going to write out that the plus or minus stress for this rotating shaft is equal to 16 FL. F is the force that's on it, L is the length of the rod, this is divided by pi times the diameter cubed, d cubed, right? Again, this comes from statics from analyzing the bending moment. Um, we're just going to use this equation as if we'd already known it in this class. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and plug this in. We can say that, okay, 72,000 pounds per square inch, PSI, is then equal to 16 over pi, which is just going to be a constant multiplied by our force, 12,500 pounds, right? And then multiplied by the length, that's gonna be 96 inches, divided by the diameter cubed. So we can go ahead and solve for the diameter for this given stress. When I do so, rearranging and solving for uh, the diameter, we find that the diameter is equal to 4.39 inches. Right? Now technically since it says that it wants us to design a shaft that will satisfy these conditions, it's always a good idea to be thinking about safety factors. Um, this is obviously, this line represents an average failure strength, right? When half of the components fail since we're not told otherwise. So it would be good to build in a safety factor. If you built in say a safety factor of 2, then you might say that, okay, 36,000 psi, so it's going to withstand, it's going to withstand half the stress. That would be equal to 16 pi over the same load, 12,500 pounds times 96 inches, because our length isn't changing. But this time we're going to solve for d, and it's going to be a different value. And this time, plugging in uh, and solving for the diameter, we find that it's equal to 5.54 inches. 
So just going from 4.39 inches to 5.54 inches builds in a safety factor of 2 in this experiment. And that's how you use these SN curves.